Hello, my name is Eris, and I am not a good builder, but I would like to be. In my quest to build better, I have sought out the advice of some people who are good builders. And they always have two main pieces of advice. Practice and use references. Are you telling me that all I need to do to be a better builder is practice and use reference images? That's it? That's all I need to do? All this time, all, that's all I need to do. And then I can build as good as you. Wow, why did I never think of that? Oh wait, I have, and I've done that, and I still suck. Clearly, there's a bit more to it than that. Now look, it is good, solid advice. You do need to practice, and reference images can be a good place to start when you can't visualize something yourself. But, what if you don't even know how to start with a reference picture? That's my problem. How do I read a reference picture and figure out how to make that into a build? That's what we're going to figure out in this video. So let's go give it a try. Our build plan has four phases with a few steps in each phase. Phase one is high level or meta planning. We have three steps in this phase. First, we need to decide on the style of build. Is it going to be modern, fantasy, medieval, cottagecore, little like fairy tale sort of thing? Whatever sort of aesthetic you want. For this video, we're going to do a modern era as in today type build that you would find in the United States. Step two is to decide on the type of build. Are you doing a house, a tavern, a shop, a castle, a fortress of doom? We're just going to do a house, kind of like a suburban house. Uh, not, not really like an actual American suburban house because I've been to those. They do not look like what we're making today. What we're making today is more like the movie version, which is uh, way, way nicer than the kinds that I've seen. And step three is to find some reference images. We're going to be using these two images, and it's going to be mostly the first one, but we're going to use the second image just to kind of like fill in a few gaps. Phase one was pretty easy, right? Let's move on to phase two. This is the deconstruction phase. We're going to look at our reference images and we're going to break them down to figure out what we want to incorporate into our Minecraft build. Let's look for the smallest feature that we want to replicate. That could be a steepled roof design. That could be maybe uh, something on the window, a trim, anything of that sort. Any of the really small features that you want to incorporate into your build. In our case, for today's build, we're going to try to replicate maybe that chimney top. That might be our smallest feature that we want to incorporate. Next, we're going to look for any unusual or focal features that we also want to replicate. That could be a roof line, maybe it's a tower, it could be the, a column, it could be materials. It's anything that really stands out in your reference image that you want to, again, incorporate into your Minecraft build. For ours, that could be maybe the trim uh, along the windows. That could maybe be this uh, vent right up here on the peaks. It could be maybe some stone supports. Um, it could be maybe the different peaks of the roof line. So we'll keep those in mind and we'll see what we can incorporate as we get further into the plan. The last step in the deconstruction phase is to break down the image into some basic shapes, into like little units or sections that we can then layer up to create the overall shape. For our house build, we have this main section. Then we have this uh, like little outcropping right here. I'm calling that the main outcropping. Then we have the second floor main. And then we have the second floor off, which is kind of hard to see because it's in the back. But if you look at the roof line, you can kind of see that there's a second section. I couldn't find any images similar to this house that showed in the back, but it looks like there's a section back here too. So I'm going to call this second floor off. Now we're in phase three. This is the in-game planning. So we are finally in Minecraft, almost ready to start building, but not quite. We need to pick a material that will replicate the smallest feature that we picked out in our reference build. So for ours, we were looking at maybe this chimney top. And I think maybe a lightning rod or a fence or maybe an iron bar would be good to replicate that. 
it's important that we figure out what we want to use to make our smallest feature because remember everything in Minecraft takes up one block of air. This piece of stone takes up just as much space as this piece of fence, but they don't look like they take up the same, right? This, this looks like there's a lot more mass here than here, but this comes with basically its own air that replaces the air that was in that block, just like this one does. So even though this looks smaller, remember it's still actually taking up the same amount of space as this block. That's why we need to figure out how we're going to replicate the smallest feature. Now, if you're lucky, your smallest feature can be replicated with just one item, but maybe your smallest feature is actually going to require a couple items put together to replicate. I, I, I don't know what this might be, but maybe it's something like this, right? Or maybe, I don't know, what, whatever this is, right? If this is your smallest feature, then this takes up a lot more space and we're going to be using that smallest feature to figure out how big our whole build needs to be. But we're in luck, we can make something pretty easy with just using maybe a lightning rod or a fence or, or an iron bar. Now that we know what our smallest feature is and what we think we can use to replicate it, we can use that to figure out the overall size. So remembering that even the smallest thing, such as a fence post, takes up one block, even though it doesn't look like it takes up that much. We can now kind of estimate, our, using our reference image and using that smallest material, to figure out kind of how many blocks out do we need to go. So I've already done the math, so I'm just going to pop it up on the screen for you. Our main section is going to be 32 by 9, and we're probably going to go up 5. Our main outcropping that centerpiece is going to be uh, 15 and it's going to be kind of centered and then it's going to go back five but it's also going out one so it's going to end up being six in total and it's going to go up by five our second floor main is going to be 19 in total so it's a little bit bigger than this main outcropping and it is also going uh, back six but it is not sticking out, it's gonna be flush with the main. And then we have this other little section um, that, that kind of goes back a little bit as well. And then we have the second floor off, which will line up with the main outcropping being at 15. It'll go uh, in four and it'll stick out of the back by two. So the house that you saw in the very beginning of this video, that was a test run to make sure that this plan will actually work. So that's how come I already have all these numbers figured out. But I didn't just want to reconstruct that, like break it down backwards and, and pretend like I hadn't already done it. So I figured I'd let you guys see it in the beginning and then we will reconstruct it here all over again. So we've determined our material for the smallest feature, we've determined our overall size, and you know, it might need a little bit of tweaking as you're actually building, you might find the proportions just don't look right once you get it into the game, and that's fine. Tweak it if you need to. Nothing is set in stone here. You can change it up however you need to. Now our next step is to decide on a location. Now I'm in a super flat world, obviously, but I've got ourselves a little section here that we're going to be building on right in the center where I've been running around for the past several minutes. And the last step of in-game planning is to pick out your materials. I've already decided, as you saw with the house in the beginning, that I'm going to be using light gray concrete for the walls, deep slate slabs for the roof, for some stone supports, I'm going to be using tuff, and I'm going to be using spruce wood for some accents, like that little vent thing in the peak, and probably trap doors to make shutters. And now finally, we can actually start building. We are now in phase four, the reconstruction phase. The first thing we are going to do in the reconstruction phase is lay out the footprint starting with the bottom most section as determined back in phase two, step six. Next, we will build up the framework for the first floor and then we will fill in the walls. Repeat those steps for each section moving upward and outward. In this case, that means we are going to build the framework for the second floor and then fill in the walls. Step 14 is adding the roof. 
we are going to start by building the roof for the peaks. Then we'll fill in the roof for the main part of the house, making sure it is at its highest point in the center. And this is me calculating why the heck I can't get this part right, eventually giving up trying to figure it out and just going for it. Now we are using slabs to add a border around the roof, dropping them down by a half block in order to cover up some of those gaps. With the bulk of the build finished, it is now time for step 15, detailing. We are going to start with the windows. I am once again struggling to figure out dimensions. I took some liberties changing window placements and sizes. The reference pictures didn't give me much to work with for the sides or back, so I took some liberties here too. I tried to balance the back of the house with the front, not necessarily in the number of windows, but in how much light they let in. Each layer we add, from the basic structure to windows to the details we're going to do next, help give the build more life. Here we are once again confused why the details aren't matching up to the test build, and like last time, I gave up trying to figure out my mistake and just rolled with it. The upper levels are getting a unibrow and then some fences to frame. We are using trap doors to make half shutters and then typical shutters that aren't functional for a window of this size, but we're in a game so does it really matter? No. The side windows get some decoration too, with two fence posts and a gate. The back windows are getting the shutter treatment as well. And since the back has less visual interest than the front of the house, let's spice it up by giving it the same fence and gate detail as the side window. The front window looks dumb, let's change it. Adding this layer has really started to bring together the image we're crafting. The front of the house still feels a bit flat, Let's add some more dimension to it with a little outcropping where the front door will be. Let's start by carrying out the pattern of the roof. We should probably put some doors in too. Then we'll add in supports using tuff and pillars of gray concrete powder. Let's add a bit more detailing to the roof of the outcropping with trim similar to what we did all the way around the house. This seems to soften the edge. We're still dealing with 90 degree angles, but in terms of the overall shape, it feels a bit smoother and more interesting. Look how much more dynamic the house is now, just with that small addition. The back of the house needs some love too. Let's give it a back door and a support pillar that matches the front door pillars. This keeps the build cohesive, just like using the same window designs at the front of the house and the back. We'll build a sliding glass door, which will open onto a patio we will build in a moment. Back at the front of the house, let's make a garage door using wall blocks instead of full blocks so that the garage door will be inset slightly and help to break up the flatness of this section. We'll throw in a couple small windows and then a different wall block to give it some texture. We're also changing out the material underneath the door to concrete powder and in a little bit, we'll add in the driveway. We are finally adding in the smallest feature, the star of the whole build process. After a bit of terraforming, because I need more space for the backyard, we can build that patio, I promise. We are using beehive nests for the pattern on top, placing them in different orientations to give just a little subtle interest to the patio. As part of the exterior, we're going to add a few small details like a grill and a sitting area to make the space feel lived in. Never mind the interior, which is actually lived in being anything but that. We are finally in the last step, step 16, landscaping, starting with some trees. I don't really like how my custom trees look. I guess I'm gonna have to do what the pros say in practice. 
We're adding in some shrubbery, both potted and as hedges, in the front and around the back and sides as well. We are popping in moss blocks sporadically, which we will then bone meal to spread. After bone mealing each moss block, we're going back through to get rid of the baby azaleas, all the tall grass, and most, but not all of the short grass. This look is my preference, but your lawn can be as wild and overgrown as you would like. Next, we are putting in the driveway and walkway following the path of the terrain and moss patches. We're bone mealing one more time in the regular grass block section to get some flowers and then trimming back the tall grass and most of the short grass like we did with the moss. What do you think? It looks like the reference picture, right? Like, they're family, they're related. I did have a bit of a mess up. Something here with uh, this window and this, this bigger peak just did not go right. And in the back, um, this second peak over here, this one right here, should be a little bit higher than this one. It should be one block higher. I do not know what went wrong. I was looking and looking and looking and I could not figure out what I did wrong. It was probably something really obvious and I was just being stupid. Let me know what you think. Let's hop back into the test build. That one has an interior and we'll have a little fireside chat to talk about some of the things that we've learned. Please have a seat. Let's talk pros and cons first, starting with what went well. I liked figuring out the smallest feature that I wanted to replicate first and then using that to build up the overall size. I think that gave me a realistic expectation of how big my build would end up being. I also liked breaking down the reference image into those units, those boxes, to create the overall shape and to give myself a framework to build from. Having a process to follow was also really helpful. Normally when I'm building, I tend to get distracted or I won't know what to do next, I get stuck. Having these steps kept me guided, kept me focused, kept me moving forward. But there are some cons to having a process as well. I felt like that was a lot of steps before we actually got into building and that made me feel a little bit impatient. I kind of just wanted to like jump right in and get started, but I had to do all that groundwork first. It also felt a bit rigid. I felt stuck when I didn't know how to replicate that white trim that the house in the reference pictures has. I wanted to use birchwood to do that and it just ended up not looking right and we'll talk more about why that is later on. And that leads me to the last of my cons. I had some trouble figuring out what materials to use. This process doesn't help with that really at all. You still have to figure out what materials you want to use for your build completely on your own this process didn't help with that. Luckily though, there are lots of people out there who are much better at color theory and kind of like what materials go well together and how to texture and things like that. So maybe with a bit more, I hate to say it, but practice, I will eventually be able to figure that out faster and not struggle so much with that. And until then, I'll just refer to the experts on that. Outside of the build process, there are a few other lessons that I learned. If you want a peaked roof, it's probably best to use odd numbers. So here we have five and that gives us a peak right in the center on number three. If you're using even numbers like here with six and then you try to do the same type of roof, you end up with a more subtle peak, which is totally fine if that's what you want. Or you could also use stairs if you're going with even numbers. I find that the bottom of this looks kind of weird, but the top ends up being very similar to an odd numbered build. I mentioned how I wanted to use birch to create that high contrast trim, but it just didn't look right with the gray. So if we look at it here, let's put up some signs. See wood, all the wood colors in the overworld. So your oak, your spruce, your birch, your dark forest, jungle, acacia, those are all quite warm toned and gray is obviously a cool tone and I feel like the gray cool tone with the birch makes the birch seem kind of sickly like I feel like it's pulling out some of the cooler tones in the birch wood but 
not in a good way. It, it looks, I don't know how else to describe it besides sick. It kind of, it kind of looks like it has a weird, like, deathly pall to it. But I found that I didn't have that problem as much with the spruce. Now, obviously, the spruce does seem like a warmer tone than the birch. Obviously, it's a much darker tone as well, but we're, we're looking at the undertones here. But I think why the, the spruce worked better is because of the, like, metal detailing in the doors and in the trap doors. That definitely works a lot better with the gray concrete and the cool tones. And I think that's why... I prefer the spruce to the birch, even though the birch stands out a little bit more, giving that high contrast. I think the spruce actually ended up being better, probably because of this this like metal detailing in it. This goes back to color theory, and I just don't know enough about it to really like explain it or to do a video on it. So this is something that I need to learn some more about, and maybe someday in the future, when I know what I'm talking about, we can revisit this topic. I also had to accept that any build is going to look stupid until the very end. Until it's finished, it's going to look like crap. But once you get those details in, and especially once you add in the landscaping, even just this really basic landscaping with a little bit of elevation change, a few trees thrown in, some grass, some flowers, and some bushes, and some flower pots, then take another look at it, and I think you'll find that it's actually way better than you thought it was, because I definitely thought this looked like crap until I finish. Could you, uh, could you do the thing? Could you, you know, like, comment, subscribe? Can we, can we call that Lickus? Would that be weird? It is weird. Let's call it that. Do the thing, Lickus. Thanks. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and have a great rest of your day. Bye!